the issue of engaging in insurrection, which doesn't mean a crime has to be committed, and which doesn't mean a crime has to be committed, and which doesn't mean a crime has to be committed, and a conviction has to happen, just whether or not he engaged in insurrection and whether or not he is eligible. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the channel. So we all see our friends on the left completely losing their collective single-celled organism minds as they, they're literally driving each other mad, spreading their insane fantasies regarding Donald Trump, the 14th Amendment, and the U.S. Supreme Court. They are losing it. And much of the media is losing it with them. They don't know what to do. They're, they're all just kind of, it's an echo bubble disaster. So apparently ABC News, they're not. They are making their move towards sanity. And even George Stephanopoulos, hatchet man for Hillary Clinton and all around partisan tribalist troll thinks that there is absolutely zero chance that the Supreme Court allows either a state Supreme Court or an unelected activist, which is what we have in Maine, to interfere and meddle with the presidential election. And, you know, he didn't do it in the textbook, you know, half in, half out stephanopoulos way he absolutely crushes democrat hopes and dreams until there really is zero doubt and i'll show you that in a moment guys but first guys help us to continue to grow make sure to like comment subscribe most importantly share the channel so we can get our conservative message to as many people as possible have a look at this and kicked off the ballot trump would be spiking the football we are told Trump still plans to appeal that decision in Colorado. There are similar lawsuits playing out in more than a dozen states, putting even more pressure on the U.S. Supreme Court to weigh in quickly, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks very much. Just bringing our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. Rachel just said it right there. You've got this challenge in Maine. You've got Colorado, several other states. This is definitely going to the Supreme Court. Yeah, and, and there's no question the Supreme Court's going to hear it, right? Because a lot of the time, cases will be brought to the Supreme Court, and they'll have to decide, do we take the case or do we not take the case? There is no doubt in my mind that they are going to take this case. They have to take this case. They're going to rule in this case. And, and, and the advantage that the Donald Trump team has is that if they accept any one of the arguments, he wins. Meaning, we could go through the five or so arguments that he has. You have a due process argument. You have definitional arguments. You have questions about whether it's self-executing or whether you need Congress to make laws. Whether the president is even covered. Exactly. Is the president even covered? If he wins on any one of those arguments, he wins. And that's the challenge that the other side is going to have. We were talking about this before, Air. I think you and I both begin from the premise that the Supreme Court simply does not want to step in and decide the election, that there's no way they're going to uphold the Maine decision or the Colorado decision. We may be proven wrong, but what's the argument? Well, uh, the, the argument that, that the other side is going to make is that under the clear words of the 14th Amendment, Section 3, this should apply, right? And that's where a lot of people start, and they say, wait a sec. Look at this. This was an insurrection, etc. But then when you get into the little definitional aspects of the 14th Amendment and you look at other sections of the 14th Amendment, there are various arguments to be made. And, and I think the most important one is this argument about due process, right, which is where has he been charged with an insurrection? Who has decided? In Colorado, they would say, well, it was a judge that resolved uh, this question, etc. But there are real legal arguments that Donald Trump has. And because there's a menu of outs for the court, they're going to find one, I would think, that will say Donald Trump can remain on the ballot. Far different case also coming, whether the president, former president, has immunity from criminal prosecution. Right, and that's a much more of a long shot argument. The idea that the president of the United States has total immunity in his role as president, I, I can't see how the court would determine that. And this is a nice way, by the way, if they want to take up both together to make it clear they're being fair, which is, no, the president doesn't have total immunity, but yes, he remains on the ballot. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Michael? Yeah, so you guys see that. Of course, the Supreme Court has no choice but to take it up. They're, they're going to have to. And it's, it's nice to see Dan Abrams really break it down in such a clear way. The guy's absolutely right. You know, if the court considers due process, he wins. If they consider the definition of insurrection or potentially even the definition of office, he wins. If there's a question about, you know, whether it's self-executing or whether it isn't or whether Congress needs to enact law, which they actually have, it's a criminal statute that Jack Smith neglected to charge him under. 
because no one in government, even the you know insanely deranged political operatives in government, none of them even believe that an insurrection actually took place. But if they consider that, he wins. Donald Trump literally has a handful of reasonable and constitutional arguments that he wins on. And the government's one and only position is that it's Trump. Orange man bad. Got to get Trump. Got to get Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. That's all it is. It's TDS. You know, there is no redeeming quality or possible way that this passes muster, which really, honestly, is depressing. You know, we have people in this country, citizens, people in this chat, you know, and worse than all that, you know, people in actual positions of power who are so insane, so delusional, so Trump deranged that they are ignoring every single one of those arguments and they're willing to drag the entire psyche of the nation through the mud and destroy anything that they can possibly get away with destroying all for their get Trump fantasy. It's freaking insane. It's insane. It's so sad. It's so scary. But, you know, it's so insane that George freaking Stephanopoulos can't get on board with you guys. And that dude parrots just about anything he's paid to say. But anyway, that's all I've got, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. We'll see you in the next one.